right? If you're anything like me, you are constantly wondering what's faster and more efficient to boil water. Is it a, an aluminium pan or is it a kettle? Now you see lots of people using dinky little kettles like these and they look great and they've got obvious advantages like compactness and a little pouring spout but is it more efficient and is it worth carrying on a camp? So I'm going to compare the two, I'm going to weigh the gas before and afterwards and also for good measure I'm going to compare it to a heat exchange kettle. So let's go! Now for this experiment I've got the Dometic Orogo stove and heater because it's quite chilly in here and I've got a kettle sent kindly by Fi Maple. I bought this Fi Maple kettle myself and these are identical aluminium kettles except this has the heat exchange metal on the bottom with the fins in there, hope you can see that, and that, that helps it to make it more efficient and of course it also makes it a, a, a little heavier. I'll put the weights on the screen now and I've got a Soto one litre pan here and I've chosen this because it's made out of similar thickness aluminium and it's pretty much identical in terms of diameter. It's slightly more capacity at one litre compared to 700 millilitres for this, but I'm going to use identical amounts of 500 mil of water for each little experiment. And I'm using for this the Soto Fusion Trek stove. And, and if you haven't seen my recent winter test where this stove did really well, have a little look at that. Okay. Right, off we go with the pan from the Soto Navigator set. Well, that was it, one minute 50, and the gas used is eight grams of gas. So, pretty good. The pan itself weighs 154 grams, and it's important to note that because if you are using any of these on a long trip, you might want to offset the weight of the device against the weight of the gas and hence its efficiency in carrying. Now it's on now to the Fire Maple Feast T3 kettle. This weighs 189 grams compared to the pans 154, but of course that doesn't include the handle, which I've forgotten, so I've just got to uh, lift that off like that. So the weights are comparable, uh, really, with the, with the handle. They're about identical. Right, let's get another 500 mil of water in this whilst the gas canister warms back up a little bit. Okay, stopwatch on for the Fi Maple T3. And I've just measured the gas. Okay, let's go. So, I quite like the design of this because the, the handle stays straight up. This is a very kind of like hard plastic on here and I think that would be fine for ordinary use. I don't think it would stand up too well with a open fire though. And uh, there's also a little plastic grabber on top of the lid there that stands up on a little slot and if you were to push that down it would just fall down there and then you can kind of like lift that up and slide it along and it stays up I hope you can see that yeah got that on full right be back in a mo when this is boiling right that's just coming up to the same time as the Soto now and it's very close steam coming out the spout there A few seconds longer so far. Okay, and I'm calling that there to a rolling boil at 
2 minutes 20. So that's taken about 25 seconds longer. Not a lot of it. And the gas used was 9 grams, so only 1 gram of gas more, but of course it just took 20 seconds. So consumption is negligible, the time was a little bit more. Could be because this is slightly thicker aluminium, took a little bit more time to uh, warm through, but not much in it really. And you've got the real handy pouring convenience there, so if you were pouring a drink or into your dehydrated meal, you've got a little bit more precision instead of slopping it in a big wide waterfall out of there. So a little bit of a uh, safety edge there. Right, so this should be interesting. On to another 500 mil with the heat exchange pan. I wonder if this might be a little bit slower again because there's more metal to heat up before it really starts going. Might be more efficient in the long run on multiple boils. So let's find out. Right, I'd let the gas canister warm back up to room temperature. And here we go with the heat exchange kettle. This is the Fees XT1. Now, this weighs 246 grams, so around 50 grams uh, more than them both. So this is going to have to be really efficient to prove its worth. Okay, reset. Forgot to stop the stopwatch and my excitement. Go and get some more water. Rotate. Hey, the life of a tester. I'll cool this down as well. Back in a mo. <laughs> right, this is the Fine Maple Feast XT1. And this time I'm not forgetting to start the stopwatch. And as I was saying, with this being around 60 grams heavier for this kettle, it's going to have to be significantly more efficient gas wise to allow for its weight. It's one minute gone and I'm getting some noises. There we go, calling that 1 minute 35. Wow, that was super fast. Great. Whoa, turn that down. So I measured that this only used 5 grams of gas to come to the boil, as accurately as I can get it on my scales. So the Fire Maple Fees XT1 did really, really well. Now, to make up for its weight difference of 57 grams more than the Feast T3, you would have to do 15 boils to get more weight in gas efficiency. So over a three day camp, if you just use this for heating the water, that may well be the case. It would balance out in terms of weight carried and gas, but of course, you would have to carry less gas in the first place. You could worry about it less. So this could well have a, a place in your arsenal. Now, the slight disadvantage with small kettles like this is you can't fit a lot inside them really. So uh, in here, I've tried it, there's not even space enough for a 100 gram gas canister. You can fit small folding stoves in there, the Fire Maple Polaris will uh, fit in there, both the remote canister one and the uh, stove top one. This excellent Soto Fusion Trek definitely won't fit in there. And in, in fact, it'll only just fit in this larger one litre pan here. But I would say what you would probably be doing with this is uh, keeping your gas separately and putting your stove and a few other accessories in inside. So I'm going to be trying it uh, on future camps and uh, it's a real cute little thing. So once again, thanks 
to Fire Maple for sending me this. I shall de definitely be using uh, this again. I paid for this one uh, myself, and thanks to Soto for sending this stove. So I hope you've enjoyed this short video, and please let me know what your experiences of using a kettle has been, which your preferences are, and if you ever, for boiling water, always stick to just a kettle instead of using a pan. It's definitely something I'm gonna try, because, you know, it's just cute, isn't it? I think I'd like, definitely like to try the next one up. I'll put a picture uh, of that, and that might be possible to put a few more things inside instead of this very kind of like compact one. Again, thanks for watching. I'll put this in my stoves playlist, which is growing all the time. And coming soon is the Fire Maple Mars. So in summary, there was a little bit of a surprise here, wasn't there? I expected the small kettle to beat the time of the aluminium pan. Uh, it used one gram more of fuel and was around 20 seconds behind. And I think that's down to it being slightly thicker aluminium. So it took a few seconds to, to warm through. Now, the efficiency of the heat exchanger kettle was definitely, definitely uh, marked with it using four, around four grams less of fuel, wasn't it? So yeah, real kind of like top, top score uh, for that. So in the future, I'm gonna be trying the larger heat exchange kettle. I think one disadvantage of this is you couldn't place it over an open fire. I think these fins uh, are quite sensitive to very high temperatures, but definitely worth a look-see in the future.